My wife left me for a woman. My wife, 26 female, and I, 30 male, had been together for 12 years. Married for 7 years. Three beautiful boys. The last year of our marriage has been extremely rocky. We moved from our house in South Carolina back to where she was from, Michigan, due to me taking a higher paying job, and so she would be closer to her family. I don't have much family left. We ended up living in our camper for three months while we searched for another home to purchase. I understand this added a lot of stress to her, the kids, and our marriage. We ended up finding the perfect home and buying it. Shortly after moving in, the marriage went south. She started leaving for the weekend and hanging out with her family, but she wouldn't invite me. She stayed out late drinking on the weekends with her cousins while I watched the kids. During this time, I tried communicating with her that I didn't like her going out every weekend and wanted to do things as a family. I was met with anger and hostility any time I tried to talk to her. This went on for a few months until I finally told her that our relationship and marriage were going nowhere and I wanted a divorce. I had felt divorced for months anyway. She filed in early August. We quickly just stopped talking to each other unless it had to do with the kids and alternated weekends watching them. I moved into our extra bedroom in the house. We essentially became roommates. In November, we both decided together to try and rekindle and work on our marriage. Things started to get better. We were communicating effectively about issues. We were starting to do things together again. In December, we traveled out of state for vacation, and after Christmas, we decided that she would drop the divorce and we would continue to work on our relationship. Fast forward to the middle of January. I noticed her communication decreased significantly, whether in person or over text. She didn't want to go anywhere with me, and she started to get very protective of her phone. Face down, ring her off, etc. I didn't think anything of it and just kept working on being the best husband I could be to her. At the end of January, she underwent gastric bypass surgery to lose weight. I was all for it, as she struggled to lose weight after three kids, I loved her either way and actually preferred her the size she was. After the surgery, she was very emotional, and when I asked, she compared it to childbirth. I stood by her side for the next week or so as the emotional roller coaster happened. Last weekend she said she made a new friend off Call of Duty, she is an avid Call of Duty mobile gamer, and it was a girl who lived in another state but was going to be in a town by us for the weekend, and asked if she could go hang with her for the weekend. I said, could, I got the kids, go have fun. I didn't hear anything from her all weekend, literally nothing, and Sunday she texted me that, we are going through with the divorce and she needs to have a conversation with me. She gets home covered in hickeys and proceeds to tell me that she has been talking to this girl off call of duty, who is actually a transitioning female, female to male. This girl lives about six hours from us. She said she is in love and that no one has ever made her feel this way. She also claimed that she is the happiest she has ever been with anyone in her life. They had been talking for a month, but this was the first time they actually met. She said that they have talked about her moving in together after the divorce is done. She claims that she deserves someone who genuinely loves her. When I asked why or how she came to the conclusion that she was bisexual, she claimed that she made out with a girl once when she was drunk in high school, gets off to lesbian porn, and has always had strong feelings for females. I am completely blown away and, honestly, hurt. Not just for me, but for my kids as well. I have a very strong gut feeling that she is high off the butterflies and going to essentially destroy our lives together and marriage for something very temporary. She has talked to me the last couple of days and cried. She claims she will always love me, but I need to support her no matter what. She said we can be friends and focus on that and co-parenting. I am unsure how in a month we went from about to continue our lives together as a couple to now she's in a relationship with a woman. I made a vow seven years ago to love her and stay by her side, but I'm at an absolute loss for what to do. I had a man who loved me. I was his first everything. He was my everything from 19 to 26. I never felt like I ever deserved it, and I'd tell him all the time that I didn't know what I did to deserve you. 5.5 years of pure happiness. Sure, we had some difficult spots in there, but those were our best years together. Then COVID hit, and everything went to sh asterisk t. My cat died in December 2020, we married in May 2021, and I left later that year. Something in me was saying, go. It had been that way for a while. 
I can't pinpoint how long, but that voice kept coming back, and every time I'd suppress it and stick it out. I remember telling myself at one point, you'll never make it. I didn't pull the trigger earlier out of fear. Not knowing if I could do it financially on my own. Not knowing where I'd live or if I could be alone. I was in a haze the last year and a half we were together, my wedding day was like a body experience. I still can't grasp why that is. I felt like I wasn't supposed to be there, foreshadowing, I suppose. It finally hit me one day that I had to leave. If I didn't do it now, I was never going to do it. I was about to start university for the first time, he was not happy I wanted to go back to school, he didn't want to be an old dad, and I don't know if that's what pushed me finally, but I told him I couldn't do it anymore. And the rest goes black. I remember nothing from that conversation. I moved out a month later, and that was the end. 2.5 years later, many failed attempts at dating and being rejected over and over and over for the dumbest reasons. I realize how young and stupid I was. 25 seems mature in the moment, but I was still a child in my own eyes, looking back at it now. I'm alone, depressed, and feeling like I threw everything away because of some stupid feeling in me saying I needed to leave. Was it my intuition? Was there anxiety? I have no clue. But I don't know why I did it, why that was my only option in my mind, not couples therapy. I was not trying to figure out what I was feeling that way. Just leaving. I realize now that I felt alone in that relationship. I felt used when we'd have sex because I never wanted to actually do it. I lost the emotional connection with him. We couldn't communicate because it always ended up in an argument. He wasn't my teammate when I needed it. He was always annoyed with me for sleeping too much or causing drama on social media. I was married, and I felt like I was alone. But now I'm alone, almost divorced, and all I want is my old life back. I'd take all that bullshit back just to have my relationship again. I'd deal with it. I'd be sad and lonely and resentful and angry all over again if it meant I had him. He loved me so much. I feel like I'll never find that again. I'll never get engaged, and I'll never get married. I'll always be in debt to the universe because of why I left, and I hurt him by leaving. I'm terrified someone will do it back to me, even though I didn't do it to be with someone else or anything like that. I don't think I left for good enough reasons, I judge myself all the time for it. The shame, guilt, and disgust I feel for myself these days are unreal. What I'd give is to just go back to that time. I truly can't believe I did this to myself. I don't know who I am anymore. So, my 26 female wife, let's call her Mary, cheated on me 27 male, a the friend of mine 27 male, let's call him John for the story's sake, a bit of a backstory. We met when I was 22 at another friend's wedding. She was a good friend of the bride, and I was the groom. And they sat us at that table so we could get together. When I first saw her, I was completely taken aback by how beautiful she was. And when she sat down and we began to talk, we found out we had a lot of things in common. We clicked instantly. We talked for a while, ate dinner, and took to the dance floor. We danced and drank through the night. We ended up kissing in the middle of the dance floor. And when we pulled away, our friends the bride and groom came up to us and asked what was up between us. They were really excited to play matchmaker. We just shrugged it off and carried on with our night. We left without exchanging numbers, but about a week later, I got a text from her asking me out the bride gave her my number. I, of course, said yes. And it turned into a relationship. The relationship was great other than small arguments. We never really fought, and it was never anything really serious. I eventually asked her to marry me about two years into our dating. And we were married less than a year later. We were married for a little more than a year when it all came crashing down on me. Just before our first anniversary, there were little things that were irritating me. She became more guarded of her phone. Girls' nights became more frequent. And our sex life was almost non-existent. I had brought this up on multiple occasions, but was brushed off. And I'm letting my insecurities get to me. She would continue to go on as if what I felt and tried to communicate didn't matter to her. So I became colder and colder. I stopped giving her a goodbye kiss as I left for work, and unless it was something important. We hardly spoke, one night while she slept. I took her phone and laptop and skimmed through her texts, emails, and messenger apps and found nothing. And from reading the stories here, I checked her car, I grabbed her keys, looked in her car, and found a second phone. I knew in that instant what was going on, but I wanted all the evidence for when I called her out. I didn't want her to say something like it had only happened once or anything stupid like that. I looked through the phone and found only one number. I read through every message, 
I connected the phone to my computer, printed out every message and every photo, and spent the night researching divorce lawyers. I spent hours of my day in my at-home office reading the bios of lawyers and found one that I liked. So I emailed him, but as it was a Saturday, he wasn't in the office. I then wanted to know who the guy was, so I grabbed my phone, typed the number I wanted to call, and pretended I'm Spectrum because who doesn't have Spectrum? But John's contact number popped up. It took me a minute to put two and two together, but when I did, I blew up. I was yelling and cursing in my office, and my wife opened the door to check on me. But when I saw her, I told her to get out. She closed the door and went to our room. I had never cursed at my wife or raised my voice above a normal volume, all day. I never left my office, I was just silently raging, just glaring at the wall. I called one of my friends the groom from the wedding, and told him I needed to go for a drink and asked if he'd come with me. He must have heard something in my voice because he asked if I was okay. I told him I wasn't, and I really needed to drink, so, without a word. I took all the printouts and left to go to the bar. I arrived first and ordered for shots of Jack and a beer. I was on my last shot when my friend, let's call him Tom, arrived and asked what's going on. I told him straight out, Mary's cheating, he gave me sympathy, and I asked if he wanted to know with whom man told him it was John. He became visibly irritated, he was the one that introduced me to John, and all he could say was I'm sorry over and over. John and I were never super close, we wouldn't ask one another to hang out. But if we saw each other at a get-together, we were friendly. I told Tom not to mention this to anyone, as I had just found out and I hadn't even spoken to Mary or a lawyer yet. I asked him not to tell his wife, and if she asked what was wrong with me, to say I'm having problems at work, he agreed. We drank and talked for most of the night. Then I called an Uber and went home around 3 a.m. It was the first time I looked at my phone since I called Tom. And there were missed calls and a bunch of texts, all from Mary asking me where I was, when I'd be home and if I was okay. I got home, and she was asleep on the couch. I just walked up to our bedroom man went to sleep. I woke up with her in bed, so I got dressed and left the house. I went to go pick up my car and go to my office, buried myself in work for the day, and... Dear cheaters, you cause a lifelong mental hell. I'm so tired of feeling awful because of something someone else did. The insecurities I have now that were never there before. The constant nightmares and mental images of them happening. My inability to trust a human being ever at all in any capacity. The embarrassment and shame. The desecration and disrespect of my body and my sexual health. The big fat disrespect to every single experience and love we shared together as partners. It's been years. And every day I wake up to this onslaught of mental hell. Bonus points if you're already a person dealing with mental illness who then gets cheated on. I'm just tired of fighting all this on top of the other challenges in my life, cheaters and homewreckers of the world. You don't deserve an authentic, loving connection. I don't care about forgiveness anymore. I hope you all go away and leave people who aren't lying abusers devoid of empathy and respect. Alone, we're much better off without you. Oblivious wife emotionally cheated. We have been together 16 years, married six, two boys at home with us. Wife got addicted to Fortnite a year ago. She has an addictive personality, so she played all the time, and she found a group of people she liked playing with. It turns out that she became attracted to one of them and tried to get him to have phone sex with her. They shared messages on Facebook, and he sent her a couple of photos. I don't know or think that she sent him photos. He is in another state, but this guy said he wouldn't do anything with her, until she got the okay from me. She came to me four days ago and said, I have something to tell you, and you're not going to like it. Now, after our whole marriage and time together, she swears that she would never cheat on me, she's not like that. It's not who she is at the core of her being. My wife isn't what you would call normal. She has major depression. She was an addict until 29, six months before we met. She got sober, and I have been her rock since then. I don't drink or do drugs. She did everything. She has issues with understanding what she is feeling generally. We would have arguments, and I would pull out of her what she was thinking or feeling, and guide her to what she really thought or wanted. She would have some work, and we would talk about it, and she would realize what she actually thought about it through me. I am the one to spell things out for her, and that is very, very hard in this situation. We go to the bedroom, and she musters up the strength to tell me that. I have been fantasizing about another man, the Fortnite guy. She goes on to tell me about what happened, how it happened, and how he was unaware that she wanted him. She told him she had a sex dream about him. She told him that she had sex with me, thinking about him, but he still didn't really give her what she wanted. So she said, I want to have sex with you, to him. He was taken aback by it, and never really gave in to her desires. 
but he didn't push her away either. One day she came to me and said that she wanted to give up Fortnite because it was becoming addictive and too much of a distraction. This was on the heels of some kid stuff that went on. I was fine with it because we could be a closer family, but it turns out she was trying to cut him off. I don't have the full story here but she did try to cut off Fortnite. That night, she cried in our bed. Cried. I didn't put two and two together. A couple of days later, she was back on. I guess at that time, he managed her on Facebook, saying, Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean for you to give up something you like. Are you going to play tonight? He wasn't being flirty, I guess. So she let him talk her into playing again. Then she would message him, trying to get him to say things to her. She masturbated to him. She had sex with me, thinking about him. We had a good week of sex. My wife isn't the most sexually active, I have a very high sexual drive, and she does not. We have slowly worked through this, and we regularly have sex 2-3 times a month, and have for the past few years. When she sits me down to tell me this, she is looking at me, with wide open eyes. She is asking for my permission to have sex with this guy. He won't do anything if you don't say it's okay, is what she told me. You know, I'm not the best at decision making, so I need you to tell me what to do. I tell her no, she isn't horribly torn up about this. She understands this is wrong, but she's really horny and can't hold back. Apparently this whole thing happened in late December, so it's been going on for about 6 weeks in total. It has come to a head because he refused her advances. She wanted to have phone sex with him, but he said no, not until she got permission. With all this to say, I am not leaving her, period. I love her, my life, and our boys. For all her flaws, we are so good together. What really concerns me is that he told her to come to me, and she did not. For all of her holier than thou talk about not cheating. The first time she catches feelings, she is contemplating flying to Colorado to have sex with this guy. I told her, so it looks like you were going to have some training in Colorado. Huh, maybe once a month. She replied, I thought about it. We have been talking non-stop about this since. As you can tell by this post, I am very detail-oriented, the complete opposite of her. I have been dissecting this thing from every direction possible, and I think she was falling in love with this guy, and if she flew to Colorado to have sex with him, it would have sealed the deal. That being said, she said that she thinks, in person, she wouldn't want him. He has scraggly hair, which she said would have to go. She said that he is a hunter and that he is stupid. He is essentially the opposite of me in many ways, but the fact that he stopped her is what's bothering me so much. Also, the fact that I have been slowly drawing out details from her started with, he's just a fantasy. Then, when I was crying about quitting Fortnite, I was trying to leave him. I'm going to Sedona for my birthday with the girls, and I invited him to a threesome, so I just keep pulling these facts out, which leads me to believe that this isn't just some fling that she wanted to. During our talks, well, me talking, I ask, are you in love with him? I don't know, what I feel, is the answer I get? This whole time, she has been dealing with the breakup with this guy at my feet, she has not been dealing with the fact that this could ruin us, she has not even really apologized until last night, when I told her what I wanted to hear, she chooses me, she loves me, she wants nothing to do with that guy, and she chooses our family and me, she emphatically said those things, I believe her, I know her, this guy isn't a threat, but she's the threat, she let this go way too far, now, all of that being said, all of it, we are all flawed human beings, I understand her catching feelings for a guy, the situation is that he is excellent at Fortnite, she spent more time with him than with me, for months because of how much she played, I fully understand that she could find him attractive, 100%, and I don't fault her, for that, in fact, I am going to use this new energy, in her to invigorate our sexual lives, she has desire problems, and this has brought out some things in her, that she has hinted at but hasn't fully invested in, she's really only in the mood one day a month, so it's hard to keep things interesting, I also understand that as a married couple, we aren't 100% honest with each other, I really try my best, but it's hard to admit to your spouse that you are attracted to another person, long time lurker, first time poster, my wayward partner, 39 male, and I, 37 female, have been married for 7 years but together for 13 years. 10 years ago, 3 years into our relationship, he had a 2 year old emotional affair, that turned into a physical affair, that turned back into an emotional affair. I know this because I snooped and read his emails. He cut off physical intimacy, a year ago, because he cared for her, and didn't want to string her along or have her hate him, his words. That's right, they continued to talk and see each other for a year after they ended their physical affair. I believe that is true, based on their email interactions. My discovery came after years and years of him denying anything happened between the two and saying that they were just friends. D-Day for us was two years ago, so it was long after the affair ended. For what it's worth, the affair was before we were married, but we were dating, although exclusively. I was heartbroken that he not only cheated on me, but also lied to me for so many years about it. But we were married, and at that point I was pregnant, we have a son now, so I decided to forgive. We both entered individual counseling, 
but not marriage counseling. I didn't push marriage counseling because our marriage, despite the affair, felt strong, and I believed him when he said it was over, and he would never cheat on me again, especially now that we are married. Long story short, I snooped and read his phone two days ago, and my heart sank when I saw her name. It turns out, they talk occasionally. I read every word, nothing had been deleted. It doesn't look like anything suspicious is going on, but they talk every few months, small talk, random things that make them think of each other, happy holidays, etc. Sometimes they go six months without texting. Most of their interactions are initiated by her, but he has initiated some. If he hadn't cheated on me with this person, I wouldn't be at all disturbed by the content. It does seem harmless. I don't think they have seen each other in real life, as we live in different states, and there is no discussion of meeting up, etc. But I can't get past it. I confronted him about it. He admitted it and said they are truly just friends, but he will stop contact if it makes me uncomfortable. But it still isn't sitting right with me. I don't know what I'm asking for here. I guess input from other waywards on why he is speaking to his ex-affair partner 10 years later. What could he be gaining from these conversations that is worth hurting me? My husband accused me of cheating 10 years ago. D-Day was the beginning of December. Some days are better than others, yesterday was a bad one where I was having a lot of obsessive thoughts and came up with some new questions I wanted to ask him. After I got our child to bed, I brought them up to him. Not sure why I do, I struggle with questioning if he's being honest in his responses and then end up feeling even more hurt and lashing out. I guess I want more reassurance from him than I get. Anyway, after a period of silence between us, he brought up something that happened 10 years ago, questions about whether I cheated on him. I thought we were past this because he hadn't brought it up in literally years, but I did my best to reassure him and comfort him because obviously I understand what it feels like to not believe what your partner says and how much it hurts. But at the end of the night, after he fell asleep, I laid there and thought, man, I just spent more time, effort and care reassuring him about something from 10 years ago than he does for me regarding something that happened 3 months ago. What's up with that and I realized that once he brought that up, the conversation 100% shifted from my discomfort with things I know happened to his discomfort with something that for the record, didn't happen he's concerned about from 10 years ago. I'm questioning if it was actually a manipulation tactic to get the crosshairs off of him and onto me. So I'd stop asking about the things he's done but he's not really the manipulative type, and he did seem really hurt when talking about it. I'm just so confused about why all of a sudden he's bringing things up from 10 years ago, that didn't actually happen, other than to distract. But then I'm also torn because I felt like that was the first time he'd opened up to me or shared any deeper inner thoughts he had in, months, at least. Maybe years. And I do have some extra sympathy for how frustrating our conversations must be for him, trying to tell him no, that didn't happen and him saying, I just don't think I believe you, when I know it didn't, but there's no way for me to prove it. This whole situation is just so frustrating. I grew up in a household with a narcissistic dad, and a mother with borderline personality disorder, who often left us for long periods of time to do unknown activities. When I was 12, I discovered that I had a half-sister, who was 17 and living in another town a few hours away. She faced economic difficulties in her home, but not neglect caused by malice. We exchanged letters, and in one, I confided my fear of the long summer holiday. Being stuck in the house without even having school to escape to was unbearable. She made a promise to come and help if it got too bad. Just let me know, and I'll find a way to help, she wrote. A few days later, after I posted my letter describing how my mother had stopped providing meals, and my dad was emotionally and sometimes physically physically abusive, she showed up on our doorstep. She told my dad that I was going to spend the summer holiday with her family, and since my dad disliked kids, including me, he happily agreed, no questions asked. We took the night train north, and I was so excited. Instead of taking me home with her, she took me camping. We spent the entire summer hiking incredibly beautiful trails, usually camping in a tent but sometimes renting a small cabin for the night. It was the happiest summer of my life. Suddenly, I had a sister who cared and enjoyed spending time with me. She could fish and trap birds, cook, and show me how to read maps, and the names of the constellations in the night sky. When the summer ended, I was transformed. I wasn't shy or lacking in confidence anymore. I was a strong and resilient kid, with an entirely new outlook on life. I reported my parents for inadequate parenting skills, 
and I was placed with a foster family. Neither of them made an effort to keep me, so it was easily done. I often think about that summer, which profoundly changed my life. I don't know if it was because I gained a sister, or because she showed me that I can survive, and thrive even on the roughest, unmarked trails. It wasn't until years later that I learned the real story behind that summer. At the time when she made me that promise, my sister lived with her family in a tiny apartment, with no space for another person or mouth to feed. In fact, she had been urged to leave herself as soon as possible to make room for her siblings, and she was now awaiting the day when she could move into her student apartment. I was amazed to hear that not only was our wonderful summer, an emergency solution, her way to keep her promise, and also give me an unforgettable summer, but she did it so well that I never once realized that we were there because we had nowhere else to go. Today, I turn 30, my sister is still my best friend, and this summer, we plan to hit the trails again. Saw a dad in the store shopping for back-to-school stuff. She appeared to be about 14 or 15 years old. We were all in the underwear aisle, and she seemed very embarrassed. She turned to him and said, Dad, I need underwear. He glanced at her and then replied, Do you want me to turn around? She quietly said yes. He then turned his back to her while she looked through the underwear, picked out what she needed, and put it in the cart. After she finished, she said, I'm done. He turned around and said, Honey, if you feel uncomfortable with me being here with you, just let me know. I can go do something else. I don't want you to feel embarrassed. I know it's awkward to be in this aisle with your dad. Actually, I think you're old enough to come back here by yourself next time. She smiled and replied, thanks, dad. He smiled back and added, thank you for not asking me if they were cute, like you did with your dresses. It almost brought tears to my eyes. I chuckled, but tears welled up. He respected her privacy and treated her as an individual. He respected her boundaries, acknowledged her feelings, and validated them. He encouraged her independence. My dad never did those things. He was inappropriate and invasive. Witnessing that reminded me of how much my dad lacked, but also of the wonderful fathers in the world. To all you amazing dads out there, thank you. I found myself and my 8-year-old daughter in the same scenario as when my narcissist mom damaged me. As a 10-year-old, and I chose to be better. This is kind of a pat on the back and kind of just a vent to acknowledge one of the many ways my narcissist mom screwed me up. I appreciate, in advance, anyone who reads this post, when I was 10-ish. My narcissist mom and I were stuck waiting at a train in her car. I caught a glimpse of myself in the rearview mirror and, for whatever reason, thought, hey, I'm kind of pretty. I feel shame even typing that sentence out today. Thanks to my narcissist mom. I had recently seen something on TV about celebrity lips, and I was thinking about whether or not I had pretty lips and decided that my lips were kind of pretty, again. Shame. I made the mistake of asking my narcissist mom if she thought my lips were pretty. She hit. The. Boof. I was stuck in that vehicle with her, and with no escape. She scolded me and shamed me until I felt like a tiny, ugly piece of garbage. Something to the effect of were you just staring at yourself in the mirror. Do you know what that is called? Silty pigeon. Vanity. Vain people stare at themselves in the mirror. Vain people think that they are pretty. People who think they are pretty on the outside are ugly and hideous on the inside. People who are pretty on the surface are ugly deep down, and if you're ugly on the inside, you might as well be ugly on the outside, too. This was the first time I remember her saying something to that effect to me, but nowhere near the last, and it really stuck with me like a pox to this day. I cannot compliment myself in any way without feeling ashamed. Like I'm a bad person for even thinking something positive about myself. Not my looks. Not my artwork. Not anything. I also do not accept compliments well. I deny and downplay. I'm trying to work on that because it really pushes off my husband. Fast forward 25 years. I'm sitting in my car on a drive through with my 8-year-old daughter. She's looking at herself in the mirror. She turns to me and asks, Mom, do you think my eyes are pretty? I think my eyes are pretty. Her eyes are gorgeous. She has beautiful hazel eyes. The memories of my narcissist mom lecturing me came flooding back, and I instantly teared up. I asked my daughter to turn and look at me so I could see her eyes. I looked at her for a good little while, and I replied to her, Your eyes are beautiful. You are beautiful on the outside, and you are absolutely gorgeous on the inside, too. I love you. Beautiful girl. I assume my daughter will probably never think of that moment again. Maybe it didn't make much of an impression on her. But that moment with her really hit me and affected my heart and soul. 
I felt like I was given a redo of a crappy moment in my life with my narcissist mom, and I chose to fix that moment for my daughter. I want her to know that she's beautiful and to never feel ashamed to believe it or to hear it. I want her to smile and say thank you when someone pays her a compliment. I want to be able to do that too. Cops knocked down my dorm door because narcissist mom lied to get me back. I attend college in Arizona. Narcissist mom and enabler stepdad live in Maine. I've gone very low contact with them over the three years I've been in school. The summers I've managed to get a job or internship to keep me out here. Four months ago narcissist mom sent me an email telling me I was coming to Thanksgiving. She wanted the family together and had a photographer coming to take photos so we could fake being a happy family for a few hours. I told her I would not be coming because of my job on campus. She then called the school who told her that uh, I'm over 18 therefore they can't tell her anything B. When she threatened to pull me out the awesome lady at the registers told her, good luck, he's on a full scholarship and pays for everything himself. When she realized she couldn't lie to the school she had enable her dad call me to beg me to come. This guy stood by since I was 12 and watched my mom beat me, degrade me lie about me and did nothing forget him i ignore his calls she then called my biological dad who laughed at her and hung up we have our issues but he's genuinely a good guy who's dealt with mental health issues his entire life so thanksgiving i woke up school was closed that day so i didn't actually have to work went to the gym enjoyed a leisurely breakfast at my favorite cafe i came home and was getting ready to throw laundry in the washer and make myself chicken and noodles in my crock pot when my door was pretty much knocked down campus cops and outside cops guess whose mom called and said her son told his 13 year old sister i don't talk to my siblings because they're easily swayed by narcissist mom that he was going to bomb the school yeah so after a trip to the campus police building them searching my room and car and finding nothing my resident assistant and two floor mates defending me and me showing emails of my mom threatening me i'd be sorry for not coming to thanksgiving they apologized I was allowed to go back to my dorm and the resident assistant and I managed to put the door back on. Then my grandma calls Guess, who was arrested for making a false police report. If you guessed my narcissist mom you'd be right. My husband got his affair partner pregnant. Hello everyone. I made several posts on this account a year ago when I was in the thick of my husband's cheating. But I've since deleted them because they were too painful to read. Some background info. My husband works for a woman we will call Hannah and I found out about four years ago they had been having an affair. I confronted them, and they supposedly ended it. Hannah entered a relationship with another man, and things seemed to be going okay, for all of us. I just found all this new stuff out today, so bear with me, it's complicated. Hannah's partner left her at the very end of October. It turns out it was because he found out she had been cheating with my husband, we will call him Chris, their entire relationship. And I also learned that their affair has been going on since the first week they met, around seven years ago. They never stopped. I saw the red flag starting in November, when he started spending more time away again. I'm assuming that since Hannah was single again, she latched right back onto my husband. Today I let things get the better of me, and I looked through my husband's phone, there it all was. The pictures show positive pregnancy tests. And an ultrasound from just yesterday. She's 13 weeks old which means she got pregnant immediately after her partner left her. Chris and I have two young daughters. This time, I need to find the strength to actually leave him, like I should have done before. This is the worst feeling in the world. The betrayal is unreal. I'm sorry for all of you who have gone through something similar. Edit, I edited this after about 24 hours since I posted. I hadn't mentioned that I knew anything, but this afternoon, he came clean about everything. He told me his affair partner was pregnant. He was in love with her, and we need to get a divorce. So there's that. My relationship is toxic with my 28-year-old male fiancé and I'm 27-year-old female. 16 weeks pregnant, planning an abortion. My relationship is toxic with my 28-year-old male fiancé. And I'm 27-year-old female 16 weeks pregnant and planning an abortion. My apologies, this is a novel. Thank you for taking the time to read this. I guess I'm just looking for insight or advice. I'd appreciate hearing stories similar to mine. I will be talking to my doctor this week regarding an abortion. You can receive an abortion up until 24 weeks in my province. This will be my third abortion. Nobody knows the first two were abortions. I said they were miscarriages. I couldn't hurt my mom and admit I aborted her grandchildren. 
but she has no idea how terrible my relationship is. Nobody knows about this pregnancy except for my fiancé, for starters. I absolutely hate myself for allowing myself to get pregnant yet again. It happened on a trip with alcohol involved. I had an appointment booked for an intrauterine device IUD to be inserted the week we returned. Home, I should have been more careful. I really want children, but not with this man. He's hurt me so many times that I couldn't possibly count all the times he has. Why am I still with him, you ask? Generational trauma, low self-esteem. There are many reasons. I guess my relationship has never been good. He's very disrespectful and controlling. He's called me every name imaginable and used every verbal technique to tear me down emotionally in arguments. I got into a verbal, almost physical altercation with my family member when they stood up for me because he was screaming at me in public. The relationship has recently become unbearable. My body is changing from the pregnancy and it's incredible to watch, but I can't even feel happy about it because of who the father is. I thought I wanted to keep this baby and that's why I'm so far along in the pregnancy. If I knew how I feel now, I would have terminated the pregnancy right away to make it easier. But with the excitement of finding out I was pregnant, I was blissfully ignorant and ignoring the reality of my relationship. I have many reasons to leave with many incidents over the past 10 years. But this recent one really made me realize I need to end this pregnancy and get out of this relationship. A few weeks ago, our dog was really sick and he was absolutely livid with me for taking him to the vet because he didn't want to spend any more money on our dog. He isn't financially struggling at all. He has about $200,000 in the bank for reference. My dog was terribly sick. He vomited 30 times and was losing his ability to walk. I was panicking. I stayed up for three nights with our dog because he had to go outside to be sick every 10 to 15 minutes. I also had to bring him to the room multiple times. I was exhausted and pregnant. And he never offered to watch the dog at night so I could get some sleep. Our dog is two years old. And I love him with all my heart. I even told him I'd pay for the bills instead of us splitting the bills. He became very angry and controlling because I called the vet for advice. I was trying everything to avoid bringing him into the vet because he was so angry with me. He would yell every time we tried to lift him. I told my fiancé to leave him in the living room as I've done for the past three nights. Since he's yelping when moved, he continued screaming at me, saying he wanted the dog in our bedroom. So he lifted our dog and he yelled. With me being pregnant and going on days without any sleep, I was so overstimulated, and I screamed at him when I heard our dog yelp. He then raised his closed fist to my head as if he were going to punch me when I yelled. He said it was his instinct to raise his fist because I screamed close to his head. He's never actually threatened me physically in 10 years. But of course, when he does, I'm pregnant. How sweet of him. He mistreats me when I'm pregnant. He can't believe how tired I am. And he calls me lazy, and he screams at me about how dirty the house is. I am typically a very clean person, and I still clean, but obviously at a slower pace these days. I am also a nurse, and my job and hours are exhausting. I'm also likely anemic right now, which isn't helping with the exhaustion. He knows all of this. We just got into an argument because his dad asked me to help move heavy boxes his parents don't. No, I'm pregnant. He didn't even offer to get up and help, even knowing I am four months pregnant. He just continued playing video games when I brought this up to him. He said I'm playing my violin and just picking fights with him. He said I'm a capable woman and don't need his help. I am so guilty about having to get an abortion, especially being this far along. But I just can't watch him treat my kids like this one day. I also can't have my kids watch me be treated like this. I'm also nervous to get an abortion because I'll need at least two days to recover. And he's going to be so cruel and unsupportive. I'm scared it'll contribute to my depression post-abortion. He'll call me lazy. And he won't offer to help. I'm not prepared to do this alone again. Thank you if you got this far. Any advice or similar stories are appreciated. My, 27 female, worst Valentine's Day with my boyfriend, 30 male, so this morning I woke up in bed alone thinking my boyfriend had gone out to get me flowers, clean up downstairs, or something nice. When I went downstairs, 
he was passed out on the couch. I gave him his Valentine's Day gift, and he told me he had forgotten, even though that's all I've been talking about, that he didn't even say Happy Valentine's Day or anything, so I was disappointed and quiet all morning. I eventually got ready and asked what he wanted to do, he just laid on the couch scrolling on his phone, and told me to decide. I wasn't sure, and he didn't seem interested in anything, so I listed out a few things, and he continued to say whatever I wanted to do, what I wanted to do was have him take me somewhere, and make the plans, but that would never happen, we both got frustrated, I could tell he didn't want to do anything, he made that very clear, so I got upset, and he stormed off upstairs and has been in bed literally all day, I'm so upset and angry at him, he can never do anything nice on special occasions, and I'm made out to be the bad guy if I care, or complain about it, I don't expect a bouquet of roses and diamonds, a war, a happy valentine's day post on facebook that I see everyone do, that I've never had in my life, a bag of dollar store chocolate, a home cooked meal, and a movie, that's fine with me and seems like not a big deal, but for some reason, asking for that is, I feel like a spoiled brat, asking to have the bare minimum on Valentine's Day, I went through 22 years of my life being depressed, and lonely on Valentine's Day while single, and now that I'm in a relationship, I feel even worse, we have been together for 5 years, and it isn't the first time he's acted like this, I force him to celebrate every holiday, we wouldn't have Christmas if it were up to him, I have no way of airing out this to him because it always ends up with me, in tears and him mad at me, I don't know where to go from here, I try to explain to him that he is a good boyfriend, and does things for me, but on days like today, I like to make them special, I'm a big celebrator, but he's not, I know I can't change a person, but there should be some compromise, especially if I feel like I'm not asking for much, I do things with him, that I have no interest in, but I I don't complain about it, because I know it would be unenjoyable for him, he won't do things with me, unless he wants to do them, which is fair, and saying that sounds wrong, but in a relationship, you do things for each other to make the other person happy, even if I'm not happy, doing something for him, I still get enjoyment out of his enjoyment, if that makes sense, how should I attempt to bring this up and talk about it, without sounding like I want to be spoiled, what would you do in this situation, I'm going to get some takeout because, obviously, we aren't making the dinner we planned tonight, I know when I get back, he will still be in bed, hopefully, I have some replies on here, Hi everyone, hopefully everyone is having a better day than me. My husband left yesterday after a very, very long fight. I will not bore you with all the details, but it has been weeks of silent treatment, and him just being fed up. Honestly, me too. It all boils down to freedom. He feels controlled by me wanting to know when he will go out, be back, etc. He wants to be able to come and go as he wishes with no nagging. The thing is, we have two toddlers, and even if we didn't, I think it is just basic respect talking to your partner. We tried therapy, but he cancelled it with no conversation about it, and just shouted at me that he would not be having therapy as he didn't need it. I know this has been a long time coming, we both work and have separate finances, thankfully, but I feel as if he was just leading me to the edge, just for me to say, if you do not want to talk about it, have an idea to fix it, or come to middle ground. Then I'm done, and he just jumped at the opportunity. He told me he'd be out later that day, got a U-Haul, plenty of boxes, and just packed everything and left. I feel sucker punched, I can't breathe, and it's just been a day. What am I supposed to tell the kids? I'm terrified of him trying to take them away. This is not the man that I married. He was not like this. He was so sweet and thoughtful, and now I'm just losing a life partner, dreams, a dad to my kids, it feels like everything, I guess I'm just looking for moral support, or to vent, I feel like I'm in shock, I can't believe it. My 26 year old female boyfriend 29 year old male got us a dog as a surprise about a year ago. And I can't take it anymore. Long time lurker. I'm at my wits end, and communicating with my boyfriend does nothing and my friends are sick and tired of this issue. We've been together for four and a half years and live together. In December 2022, I was struggling in the relationship to the point where I traveled to my parents for a few days. During those few days, I had a lot of conversations with him about what I needed to change. I needed a break because I felt like my emotional needs weren't met, and I was very lonely in the relationship at that time. The conversations we had over the phone were great, we promised to talk, and he promised change. I went home after four days, and when he picked me up from the train station, he said he had a surprise. We drove for four hours, and then I had a puppy in my lap all of a sudden. Now, to be fair, I had been talking about wanting a dog for a while, but in the same way that I've also been talking about wanting a lot of things. 
Not in a I'm ready, let us say for a day, it suits our lives now sort of way, just breed, dog names, etc. I was still in college at that point, and we both have demanding careers. Never did I think about actually getting a dog at that point. To me, it seems like an attempt to make sure I wouldn't leave him. He claims it isnt and that he saved up to buy it. The dog went home with us. I was flabbergasted by all of a sudden being thrown into that sort of responsibility. It was not a responsibility I was ready for, and with the added part of it feeling manipulative at best, I don't love the dog as much as I would have if it were our decision. That might not be fair to my boyfriend, but that s the truth. That being said, I do love the dog, he has a happy life. The issue is that I don't want that responsibility. And I have told my boyfriend many times that it's his dog, and I expect him to take that responsibility seriously. If he is sick, works late, or whatever, I'll of course do my part, but if we're both home, it's his responsibility. It's only his name on the papers, etc., and I didn't t want a dog. The dog isnt potty trained. It goes well for a while, and then everything slips. When that happens, I'm angry at him. Every issue with the dog, whether it's pee on the floor or him getting into the trash, makes me angry at my boyfriend, and I don't think I'll be able to change that thought pattern. I'm so tired of scrubbing the sofa and picking up poop almost every day. And unfortunately for my boyfriend, that annoyance is on him and not the dog. I feel like he doesn't care how much I loathe coming home from work or how I hate our apartment. The floors of this place are literally ruined. They weren't in the best shape to begin with, but it's a whole lot worse right now. If our landlord comes to visit, we are screwed. I've tried to talk with him about it. He loves the dog with his whole heart, he is very attached. I've told him I don't have much more to give in the situation and that I hate our apartment now. I don't want to bring people over, he cares for a few days, and then it's back to the old thing. He won't t go out with the dog before we go to bed unless I ask him. If I tell him to take the dog out, he does, but rarely if I don't. He thinks I'm being unfair. It's now been a year, and a part of me is wanting to get out, but only over this issue. Our other problems are fixed, I love him to death, but this is tearing me apart and making me consider whether to be in this relationship or not. I don't know how to talk with him to make him understand anymore. He is being irresponsible and does not seem to care about my feelings on the matter at all. I'm so tired. What can I do here how can I talk to him in a way he actually understands our relationship is wonderful, and I don't want to lose him unless I have to. Or do I just give up on this and move on edit, I want to note that except for the potty training issues, the dog is happy and healthy. We socialize him with both humans and dogs, he isnt alone for very long periods, etc. He just isnt trained. I, a 21 year old male, want my friendship with my best friend, 20 year old female, to end so I am friends with a girl, and we met when we were 17, and 16 at the end of high school. As the old story goes, I developed feelings for her, which I thought would pass, since she was in a relationship, I never mentioned anything, however, the feelings never went away like I thought they would, they only got stronger, even through my passing relationships, the feelings for her only got stronger, we were never single at the same time, but when the opportunity arose, I waited the appropriate amount of time, to ask her out because I realized I'm in love with her, the reason I don't think we can stay friends is because she said no, she didn't do it horribly, in a mean way, or anything, but I'm still in love with her, I feel like the only way for me to move on is to just cut all contact, it's going to suck, and she'll be upset, but I realize that her happiness isn't my responsibility in the same way, that my happiness isn't her responsibility. I already stopped calling and texting her, but she sent me a message two days ago saying that she hadn't heard from me in a while and was worried. I haven't answered it yet, and I'm not sure if I will, or how I will respond. I'm just not sure what to do anymore. Do I respond and start the downward spiral all over again, or do I just say my goodbyes? I, female, 19, love my boyfriend, male, 19, but I can't help but desire the easy life that comes with dating older men. Even though I like my boyfriend as a person, he takes care of me and tries with what he has, having no job, online school, etc. 
I feel the same about him as having a good friend, because of the lack of nice dinner dates, gifts besides flowers, etc. I'm not ungrateful, but I've encountered time and time again from other women that staying with men with a lack of ambition for the sake of love, doesn't get women a luxurious life. If I knew for sure that my boyfriend would be successful in the future, I would 100% stay with him, but I'm not sure how I can waste my time not knowing for sure. Is it cruel, and would I regret it if I broke up with him, a loving man, for not making more progress or showing somewhat more ambition? I say this as an ambitious person who wants to be a lawyer, and I'd like to feel as if my life is 10x better with a boyfriend than without. Right now, it just feels like I have a really good friend, not a promising future. I know he's young, but so am I, and I'm putting in the effort I'd want to see from others. My boyfriend 25 male wants to have an open relationship. And I 24 female I am unsure of what to do. Is it worth potentially ruining how I see him or our relationship so he doesn't end things? For some background, we've been together for 2.5 years and friends for 4.5 years. We agree on every aspect of what we want in life and the future we want together kids, marriage, traveling, etc. And our relationship is really good. He's genuinely my best friend. I love his family. And I can't imagine not being with him. We have had a couple of issues throughout our relationship solely because he has a constant need to look at girls online, send porn back and forth with his best friend, and pay for multiple girls' online fans, which makes me uncomfortable and kind of feels like he doesn't respect our relationship or is cheating. In my opinion, I feel like he's addicted to porn. Recently, I found out that he is bisexual because he was logged into a throwaway Reddit account on his iPad. And he had been talking to men to meet up. He also had a conversation with one person about how he's always wanted to do sexual stuff with his best friend and how he was going to attempt to do so. When he went to visit him six hours from where we live, I was completely caught off guard. And after a couple of days brought it up to him, he freaked out he hadn't come out to anyone in his life. And I understood that. So I gave him some space, but now that I know, I feel like he feels more comfortable with the idea of either getting with his best friend solely, sexually, while we're together or hooking up with other guys or girls. When I asked him to stop looking at online fan stuff and sharing things with his friend, he basically told me he couldn't do that because he wanted the excitement he got from it. And he knew if he told me he'd stop, he'd just be lying to me, and he'd end up doing it again. He has asked me if I would be open to him having sexual experiences with other people. Mainly because when we got together, he was a virgin. And he feels like he missed out on being able to have different experiences. He also says he wouldn't feel the need to subscribe to online fans and stuff if he were able to have other experiences. I've only slept with one other person my ex-boyfriend of three years, and honestly, the thought of him being with another girl makes me sick to my stomach. But I'm not sure if it's because of my own insecurities or because I'm genuinely not into an open relationship type of thing. I have told him if he were to hook up with men, I wouldn't have a problem with it as much, I think. Mainly because I don't feel the need to compare myself to them. Because I know I could never be a man for him, so his wanting that is more understandable. He never got to explore that side of himself because he hadn't been comfortable being open about it. And I want to be fair to him. And I'm really trying to understand where he's coming from. But I can't fully wrap my head around the fact that he could be with me while also wanting to be with other people. We've also discussed how things might be different in a few years when we have careers, are married, and are stable. And how that might be a better time because I would feel more secure about our life together. He offered to propose to me now if that would help me to agree to this situation. But I wouldn't want him to do that solely so he can sleep with other people. I want him to want to marry me on his own timeline. Anyways, ultimately, I can't stop thinking about this situation. And I really am not sure what to do. I can't imagine my life without him in it. But I also don't know if I could never accept the aspect of him being with other girls if we open our relationship. Is it acceptable if I 21 male leave my partner 22 female for being lazy and unemployed me 21 male and my partner 22 female have been dating for about 3 years now, and we are in a long distance relationship. She dropped out of school 3 years ago, about 2 months after we started dating. I thought she would either go back to school or get a job, but up until now, all she does all day is play video games and sleep and being in a long-distance relationship, 
I have to save up money to actually see her and spend time with her in person. We live on two different continents. I talked to her about this, and I told her that I wanted to end the relationship if she's still going to be unemployed until next year because she always talks about her plans to see me, and she always talks about how she's going to put in effort to see me when she gets a job. I usually end up begging for attention every day, as she sleeps the whole day. She's had a couple of job offers, but she accidentally declined because she was asleep when they called. She tried working recently, but after about three days, she stopped because she had a headache. She has tried like four jobs since I told her about my plan to break up with her, but she keeps getting fired, not even a week in, because she keeps taking a day off. She tells her manager that either her head hurts, her feet hurt, her back is sore, etc. Mind you, this girl can stay up for two days straight playing video games. She does nothing in her house to help, and her mom still cooks for her and sometimes even begs for her to shower. I love her so much, and I don't know what to do. When I met her, she had goals and aspirations for the future. Would it be wrong to leave her because she's unemployed please give me any advice. Thank you.